So where where are you in terms of being at your lowest point to where you are today? And how did you get there? At my lowest, there were some days when I did not want to get up. I asked God not to wake me up. Mm -hmm. Don't wake me up. Don't make me face what I started to face, not in 2005 at the day of the divorce. Mm -hmm. This was something I have been going through and had issues with five, six years prior to our divorce. Right. I was trying to get our family into therapy, to get him into therapy. So this has not been since 2005 for me, and it's still ongoing. But I knew eventually what I would have to do. I knew eventually it would come to this. Mm -hmm. Because as a culture, for our women, we have the burden of the whole community to say, oh, don't say anything because mm -hmm. you're going to disrupt the flow. But I think the flow is terribly been disrupted because we have that responsibility on us. I don't understand why the level of expectation, the expectation mm -hmm. of our men um, is not held to the highest regard. You know, I don't understand why that is and when it's not there. As his book typically states, set your boundaries, set your expectations, and don't move from those. And then when that happens, the person setting the expectations, she's ousted or she's brought into question. You mentioned his book, um, and Steve Harvey is seen as a relationship guru. Absolutely. Uh, he's on the family feud now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having the experience that you've had, do you resent that he's – he's uh, representing how to have a good relationship? I, um, like I said, one of his whole thing about the book is to say women need to set their goals, mm -hmm. okay? As in setting our goals, to say if this was John Dixon mm -hmm. down at uh, Kmart and he was the manager and he decided to come out with this book about relationships and he's been married three times, would we go rush down there to get that book? No, we wouldn't go get it. We can't run and go get a book and throw our expectations away because someone made us laugh the night before. Our expectations of what a public representative should be, we have totally let that down. We've lowered our expectation. And we didn't say, well, this man has been married three times. How could he possibly write a book on relationship? How can he be a guru? This man. But we didn't ask ourselves that question. We went running and we're standing around the block in the cold waiting on an interview or a, a uh, signing off on this book. Well, you know, women, um, many women, I mm -hmm. mean, I've read the book. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who mm -hmm. have. And a lot of times women want insight into a man's mm -hmm. life. We want a man's perspective. Right. And when you're hungry for a solution, mm -hmm. you'll listen to whoever's speaking. Right. So right. in that same regard, you're now out of the bed. Right. I'm out of the bed. You, you and you are speaking. So from you mm -hmm. to all the women, Mary, mm -hmm. who are having a hard time right. getting out the bed, mm -hmm. seeing their life beyond what their hopes and dreams were right. in their relationship, mm -hmm. in their family, mm -hmm. that it might they might be losing it, it might be gone. Right. What I, would you say to them? There were many days when I thought I was over and I wanted it to be over, but it was not in my hands to do that. It's not in our hands to say this is over. In that weakest moment, pray. That's what got me through this. And I don't mean just pray. On my knees, mm -hmm. crying, curled up, mm -hmm. I prayed. And even though verbally I couldn't get my prayer out quickly enough, I prayed in here. I prayed in my heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes all I could do was sit in the floor and just hope that God hear my cry because I couldn't muster anything else up to say. But I want to say to them is to hold on, to just really hold on. As the, as the civil movement helped so many people in that movement, a lot of people were hurt by the movement. Mm -hmm. movement. A lot of people had to go to the back of the bus. A lot of people weren't admitted into the restaurants or whatever. It caused them hurt. And if what we're going through right now helps a new generation of African-American women, then we have to bear the burden of that hurt. Help them to do what? To be what? To help them hold on to their virtue. We have to hold on to our virtue as women. And I think a lot of times that's what's happening, too. 
I lost my virtue. My mom raised me to be a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, but virtuous. Mm -hmm. In that, don't lower your standards. Mm. I lowered my standards. And here we are 16 years later because I didn't hold myself to those standards that my mom laid out for me. She never raised me to live with anybody. That's not how she raised me, mm -hmm. but that's what I did. I went outside of what I knew. Mm -hmm. I lived with this man for six years, and then we eventually got married. Mm -hmm. So because I lowered my standard of where I'm supposed to be, we have this chain reaction of things. But because this does involve our child, and it does involve how we look at our community and what this is doing to a community, it had to come to this point. Because as African American women and women, period, we need to hold the people, the men who say, um, this is what needs to happen. This is what happens behind closed doors. What you women are doing is what he's typically saying. Mm. You're not thinking the way you're supposed to be thinking. Right. You're supposed to act like a man. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying in what regard are we to do that when we're raising our own children? Are we not assuming the role as man and woman in a relationship when there is no man? when there's no man to take that garbage out or no man to get up early in the morning, we got to start that car that we know might not start. Right. And when we got to go to our son's functions because the father is not there, are right. we not behaving like men in that response? Or if we don't have the money to go get a plumber, do we not try to fix that sink? So my question is, at what point do we have to assume the role of men in that we have to act like the lady. We have to be a lady. And at the end of the day, we have to think like a man and in what regard and what, what role does so the dispute, man play? So you dispute that? Absolutely. And then there, you referenced the book mm -hmm. um, that was the counter to uh, act yes, like a man. Yes, absolutely. Or think, be, act like a woman, think like right, a man. Right, right. Uh, what is your affiliation with, with that book? My only affiliation is that when I read the book, and it, it did take a while, I heard about the book over a year ago, mm -hmm. and because I was going through all these emotional highs and lows, when I heard the title of the book, Why Do I Have to Act Like a Man, I didn't want to read it right, right away because I felt like, okay, this is somebody else just endorsing what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So it did take a while. But when I, when I got the opportunity to look into the book, I found that to not be true. And I really want to say to Sharonda, to Shanae um, Hall and her mother, mm -hmm. uh, Rhonda Frost, they, they did take a stand. You know, they dared to say, this is not so. This is not typically who we have to be in order to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is not how we have to think and react once we're in this relationship. Right. Um, they gave me courage um, to, to do what it is that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. God gave me my strength. Mm -hmm. He gave me my life back. And in these two women, the only two that I know about to date, mm -hmm. that's saying publicly, mm -hmm. this doesn't have to be the standard. Right. This is not how we have to do as women right. to hold on to our families. It's to start, at some point in there, start acting like men. So what's next for Mary Harvey now? I mean, you're, you sound like you're at a place where you're reclaiming your life mm -hmm. um, and your voice is being heard. Right. We're right here right now. Right, right. And uh, the country and more uh, women, we're hearing your voice. Mm -hmm. What next? Um, you know what? To just stay productive, stay progressive with my foundation, um, which helps uh, children and women. Um, to continue to be a light, to be a voice to women that are not being heard. This, this today is not going to stop at a, well, they talked. This is not about just us talking. I continue, I will continue to speak out to women, to say stand up, as painful as it is. We don't have a choice not to do anything, because what is that? There's no progress in not doing anything. There's no progress in keeping your mouth shut. If Martin Luther King had kept his mouth shut, and all the people that marched with him and kept their mouths shut, where would we be? So this is a technical, our community is moving forward, but as our culture, as women in our community, we're not moving forward. Our voices as women of our culture, our voices aren't being heard. Are you, um, are you gonna fight for your son to get him back? Absolutely, I'm not, this is not about me fighting for him. He'll be 14 this year, so, there's not a I want custody of him. What I want is undisturbed access to my child. I don't want someone 
assuming that because they're in a position of power, that they can say legally, I can, uh, law morally, that I'm in control of whether you see him or not. Neither do I want them saying they're in control of his right to have a relationship with me. So this is not about children's, just women's right. It's about children's right, you know? And no one has the, the right to interfere with his relationship with me. I have not been deemed unfitted or whatever. You know, women that are incarcerated see their children to some degree. But I have less access to my son as someone behind bars. And why is that? Is that way because a man took it upon himself to say that I have power over you. So thus, this is going to happen. So if anybody is acting scorned, it is him mm. and not me. Well, you done said something, Mary Harvey. <laughs> you were on Tom Joyner morning show this morning, and Tom said that he would do his part to try and engage a conversation between you and Steve. Um, we hope that happens whatever way that it happens and that there is a resolution. You have been on Girlfriend FM. We want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for inviting Girlfriends, me. Mary has spoken. You know, we talk about female matters. And uh, take it or leave it, believe it or not, at, at the very least, today you can say your voice has been heard. And we heard I you. I can say that a lot of women through me, mm -hmm. their voices have been heard. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a real issue. It is a very Regardless real issue. Regardless of celebrity. Absolutely. And we Absolutely. hear you. Absolutely. We hear you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. All right.